In this short video, we will review how anterior chamber problems can lead to a red eye. The anterior chamber of the eye is literally a chamber at the front of the eye containing aqueous humor. It is bounded by the cornea anteriorly and the iris and lens posteriorly. The anterior chamber can be described as deep or shallow. In this case, it is deep. The anterior chamber has an angle 360 degrees around where the iris and cornea meet. The angle contains important structures called the trabecular meshwork and Schlem's canal, which can drain aqueous humor from the eye. These microscopic structures are not visible in this photo. The limbus is an external landmark. It is the transition zone where the clear cornea blends and transitions into the white sclera. The anterior chamber is filled with aqueous humor. Aqueous humor is produced behind the iris by epithelium, covering the ciliary body. The aqueous humor circulates over the anterior lens, making its way through the iris lens channel into the anterior chamber, and eventually it exits the anterior chamber through the angle's drain. Acute angle closure glaucoma is in the differential diagnosis of a red eye. Let's see how the anterior chamber leads to the red eye in this disease. In most eyes, the iris meets the cornea so that the angle they make together is wide open at 45 degrees. In this situation, the drainage structures in the angle are easily accessed by the exiting aqueous humor. In some eyes, the lens is bigger than average and located more anteriorly in the eye, as seen in the figure on the right. This combination of lens size and location pushes the iris forward. This in turn leads to a shallower anterior chamber and narrower angle opening, in this example only 25 degrees. As a person ages, the lens grows fatter, which can lead to narrower angles. In an eye starting out with a narrow angle, acute angle closure is triggered by a dilated pupil. Here's why. In a dilated pupil, the peripheral iris becomes thicker, which takes up more angle space. Also, there is greater contact between the iris and the lens, and in fact, the iris can get stuck to the lens, which then blocks the natural aqueous humor pathway. Aqueous humor volume increases behind the iris, and eventually it pushes the peripheral iris forward, completely closing the angle. Aqueous humor cannot leave the eye and is continuously produced, which leads to very high levels of eye pressure. This High level of eye pressure and acute angle closure is extremely painful and is frequently associated with nausea and vomiting. The high pressure leads to congestion of blood vessels over the entire surface of the eye, hence the red eye. This is a clinical picture of acute angle closure showing the mid-dilated pupil, which triggers the angle closure process. The pupil will be non-responsive to light because the very high pressure causes necrosis of the iris sphincter. The photo also shows diffuse dilation of conjunctival blood vessels. This photo highlights the other findings in acute angle closure attacks. The anterior chamber is shallow. Seen here is very little space between the two beams of light on the left, one highlighting the cornea and the other immediately behind it shining on the iris. There is also corneal edema seen as subtle wrinkles in the cornea. Edema is the result of high pressure driving aqueous humor into the spongy cornea. Hyphema is another red eye problem of the anterior chamber, and blunt trauma is frequently the cause of a hyphema. Let's say you have a pebble flying towards the eye. Once it hits the cornea, it compresses the eye in the anterior posterior direction, which is the direction of the blue arrow. At the same time, the eye expands in the opposite direction, shown with the black arrows. If we turn the eye from the previous slide around so that we are looking the iris face on, we see that the forces shown by the black arrows in the previous slide are stretching the eye radially from the limbus. An eye that has just been hit will become red from traumatic inflammation. The stretching of the eye in the opposite direction to the blunt force trauma can cause the iris to rip off its base, which is highly vascular. The anterior chamber fills with blood from the torn vessels Layered blood in the anterior chamber is called a hyphema. The eye can become further red from the high pressure in the situation since the blood can clog up the eye's drainage system. Here's the clinical picture of the hyphema again. Another anterior chamber source of red eye is endophthalmitis. Endophthalmitis is an infection inside the eye. 
This can lead to a severely painful red eye and vision can drop precipitously. Infection is usually introduced into the anterior chamber during surgery. As an inflammatory reaction mounts against the foreign bacteria, white blood cells are released into the anterior chamber. If there are enough of them, they may layer out in the anterior chamber in what is called a hypopian. The cause of red eye from the anterior chamber is iritis, also called anterior uveitis. The exact etiology is unknown, but one theory postulates that exposure of an individual with a genetic predisposition to an infectious agent later results in cross-reactivity with ocular-specific antigens in a form of molecular mimicry. So the individual's immune system thinks that the eye antigens are a foreign viral or bacterial invader it previously saw. Iritis leads to the release of a number of inflammatory factors within the anterior chamber, and these in turn cause vasodilation of the vessels nearest the iris, which are at the limbus. Remember, the limbus is the area where the cornea and sclera meet. When these blood vessels dilate, this is called limbal flush. Limbal flush is the area of intense redness in between the two blue parallel lines. This is a characteristic sign of iritis. Other signs are a small meiotic pupil from spasm of the sphincter muscle of the iris. Also, patients tend to be intensely photophobic because light causes further constriction of their inflamed iris, and the constriction is very painful.